Hey, what's going on everybody? Gonna do another video here because I just got a really good idea that wasn't from me, it was actually from the comment in my last video about why did I want to sell the business. I said something, something to the effect of H, I don't know who you are, but something to the effect of, uh, you know, why, do you, why does everybody want to sell their business? I don't think everybody wants to. I think after you, you know, go through some things and, and you build the business up, sometimes you want to sell it and start something new. Um, everybody has their reasons. For me, you know, I want to get out of debt. I have a lot of college debt. I have a lot of just debt in general, and I think if all of it was paid off, I would feel so much better about life. I wouldn't need nearly as much to live on. So I think for me, that would be a huge, huge thing. So, yeah, let's talk about some of the stresses of Amazon. It's kind of what we got talking about. And I said, you know what, it's a good idea to make a video on the stresses of Amazon. So, you know, you see these people with these lavish lifestyles, right? Like, they're living in the mansion and they're driving their Lambo or whatever, their sports car. And they're going on vacations constantly. Like, okay, look... Yeah, you can live a laptop laptop lifestyle if you're making enough money on Amazon, but it's not all fun and games. There's a lot of stressful things about Amazon, and if anybody doesn't tell you that, they're full of it. They're full of shit, but I digress. So what I'm saying is there are plenty of things that keep you stressed out on Amazon. That being said, I wouldn't trade it to go back to work and work my 9 to 5. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I'm willing to put up with the risks and the, the stress of it because going to a job and doing the same thing over to me is like beating my head off a brick wall to me. And it just stresses me the hell out because it's mind numbing and it's soul crushing in the long run. And it's just very hard for me to do day to day. Um, I've did it for years, you know, um, I'd do it if I had to, but would I choose Amazon? That being said, would I choose Amazon over going back to work? No question, right? But it comes with a lot of stress. And let's talk about some of those. So let's just, let me tell you about some of the things I've had to be stressed about. And some of the things that are just inconvenient and different about a 9 to 5 job. So, yeah, could I wake up tomorrow and play video games for four straight days? Yeah, I could do that if I wanted. I've done it. I've played a video game all day. I could do that if I wanted. If I wanted to hang out with my kids, I could do that. If I want to just go to the gym and make my own schedule, I can do that. But, you know, eventually... You've got to step up and do something for the business. You can't just do that all the time. It's not like just living the life. You have a lot more freedom. There's no doubt about it. But some of the things um, I know that are extremely stressful, first of all, you've got to be risk adverse. I mean, I, even with how many sales I'm doing, like today was crazy. I did over 5,000 sales, which is nuts. Um, but that brings me to like an issue. Like let's say somebody orders a huge order off you. I'm talking like 30 items, 40 items, right? It could be fraudulent. I've seen it happen to people where if you get a big order, if it's like a huge order, you're like, wow, this is great. And then they return every one of them, and every one of them is considered damaged. You lose all the money for each item. They Your NCX score on the voice to the customer goes down. You may not be able to sell that item anymore. Literally, it can damage and destroy your whole account. Like one black hat tactic can destroy your whole account. You're literally one order away from being destroyed. That's scary. You're literally any day you could be suspended for a number of reasons. <clears throat> for those of you that followed me, I would get my ASIN suspended through no fault of my own. There was nothing that I personally did. It's going to almost certainly happen to you. It's probably going to happen to me again. Um, no reason, no rhyme or reason. Somebody wrote one comment about an item, and I don't even know if it was about my item. It was in my customer feedback. And that apparently is what I think caused the ASIN suspension. And like a lot of times, it's crazy. I'll get feedback in my customer feedback that like their mask wasn't delivered on time. I've actually gotten two or three messages about a mask. I don't even sell a mask. Seriously. So like good luck getting that feedback removed. It's again, like that's like beating your head off a brick wall or sticking a spoon in your eye. Like just... Trying to call customer support to get that done, oh, it's absolutely brutal. Now, customer feedback isn't nearly as bad because you can submit it, and usually a bot will tell you right away if you can get it removed, and then if not, you have to like write why it shouldn't be there, and typically if it's filled by Amazon, you can get it removed, but it just depends on the rep you get. So like, there's a constant stress, especially if you just launched a product of 
Am I going to get a bad product review? Am I going to get a bad customer feedback review on my account? If you get too many of those, guess what? You get suspended or your account goes down. That's a constant worry. I, my account was down for weeks and there was no, my, my ASIN, there was no reason it should have been. It, like it was, there was no valid reason it should have been. Basically, like the claim was like I had a counterfeit product, but I, it was my own product. It's my own brand. So you have to know how to navigate that. I spent weeks just up every night with my supplier, getting invoices. Like it was so stressful. And that brings me to another thing. You have to be up late at night so much. So much. If you're selling, you have to constantly reordering. Well, guess what? China's up at night. They're up in the middle of the night. Right now, it's uh, 1 in the morning, okay? Like, I constantly stay up till 2 or 3 in the morning. Like, my wife gets up earlier with the kids and stuff, you know? I'm sleeping in because I need to be up. I need to be able to talk to my supplier to get more stuff in and to do these things. And if I try to switch it, it's only a matter of time before I have to be up late night again. So if you're not up to being, if you don't want to be up late night... It's not the business for you because you got to be up late night talking to suppliers. So that can be stressful. Um, it messes with your sleep schedule and everything else. Um, like I said, the money, like, goodness, if you're selling, like, where do you get the money at, right? I literally, even though I'm doing 5,000 sales today, right, it sounds awesome. It's, it's a blessing. It really is. I'm not complaining about that. Here's the thing. Where am I getting the money to float the inventory to get back in? I don't just have it. Amazon takes two weeks to pay out. <clears> That's <throat> constant rotation of inventory. So what does that mean? I have $60,000 in, in uh, credit. That's like all the credit I have filled up on, on credit cards. $60,000. Like, that's scary. Um, you know, that's stressful. <laughs> so something goes wrong. Let's say I get my account suspended. I'm sitting there. They won't. Amazon wouldn't pay you out. And then you're sitting on $60,000 in, in credit card debt while that interest builds up. What if it takes a month or two to get your account you know, reinstated. If you get reinstated at all, um, how long is it going to take you to get your money? And then you're stuck with a bunch of inventory. You're literally putting your entire financial future on a line. You think that's stressful? It's stressful. Um, so there's that. <laughs> um, you know, you don't really start getting into a lot of this stuff until you start selling on Amazon. Like at first, it's stressful enough to get the product made. Like, yeah, it's stressful talking to suppliers, especially if you don't know the supplier, and trying to explain a customization or a modification, that can be ridiculously hard. And then they want to, you know, push you on price and try to get you, you know, the, the best price for them, but you're trying to get the best price for you, so they're your button heads there. And that's not even the most stressful part of Amazon. The most stressful part of Amazon is Amazon itself and what they can do to you at any time. They can drop you like a bad habit. If they just want to drop you, they can. And if you look at the seller forums, you'll see it every day. People get shut down. Um... Sometimes for no reason whatsoever, just because, like, the system in a lot of respects is broken, but, and, you know, or you have to know how to navigate it. Um, brings me to another thing. You know, I pay a lawyer fee every month to make sure that if something happens, I can get for legal help. Because if you're going to try to do it on your own, and if you get suspended or something gets suspended for, for no fault of your own, which a lot of times it is, and you do a great job in customer service, but you get shut down anyway. Like, I had perfect customer service ratings. And I still got my ASIN suspended for like no reason. <laughs> so it can happen to anybody. You can get suspended for one comment from a customer, even though you have perfect metrics. So you know, just consider that. Like you have to be ready to defend that. And that can cost thousands of dollars. Again, more money um, and more stress. Um, you're constantly, if you're doing things right, you know, you're constantly using like gigs and Fiverr, or you're learning it yourself and doing it yourself. You've got to do photo editing and optimizations and and all kinds of crazy things if you're really going to do this well. Um, like, I'm working on A-plus content right now. It's something new for me because I'm brand registered. But, you know, I was watching a video that said it can make you, you know, literally 30% more in sales, which is insane, right? 30% more in sales just by doing A-plus content. Um, that's wild, just to even hear that. So now I'm going to talk to somebody about A-plus content, but that could cost a lot of money, thousands of dollars to do. Or try to do it yourself, which is a ton of time and a ton of work and, frankly, a lot of stress. So you're constantly learning new stuff in this business. If you're not, if you think you're just going to be complacent and sit there and go to the beach, I'm not saying that isn't part of it, but there's, there's, Amazon's constantly changing. And if you don't keep up with it, you're going to get left behind. And if you think you're going to beat your competitors by sitting on your ass, you're not going to. Um, so you got to stay ahead of the curve. You've got to understand 
what makes your listing sell, and you're going to have to put money, time, and effort into all of that. Um, and I can go on and on, really. It's just there's so much that, yes, it's stressful. Now, it's getting up every day and, like, like a zombie and driving into work, you know, like I was an hour and a half every day and, you know, doing my job, which I didn't hate. I, I get to talk to people. I didn't hate it, and I had a, a really good owner and, you know, a good boss. Like, I, I'm not complaining about that. It's just, like... Doing the 9 to 5 is just soul crushing to me. It really is to, to do that every day. And I did it because, you know, that's what you got to do to survive. Um, nothing wrong with people that do that or people that enjoy that. But there is a lot of stress in this. Don't let anybody fool you. You know, there's constant stress of Amazon um, on you that and, and, and competitors on you. They lower their price or they up their PPC. You've got to know how to react to that. You've got to constantly be on top of it if you're going to really be successful. Um, like the A plus content, like you've got to know like HTML or you've got to be able to take HTML from somebody else, take their code and put it in and, and adjust it yourself. That's a lot. Like that's a lot of stuff. I'm already dealing with suppliers and money and, and just everything else that entails that Amazon. There's a, there's a lot of stress with that. And I think that part of it too, is I'm constantly talking with students and I'm, I'm investing my time there. And then I'm investing my time in learning new stuff so I can make new content. So that's part of my stress. But, um, yeah, there's days where I can just chill. I mean, for sure. Um, there's no doubt about it. There's huge advantages to Amazon. But also understand that you can be taken down at any time. Um, Amazon is it's their customers, not yours. So I just want you to understand that. Now, you can do the best you can do. Now, why would I want to sell the business? Because... I don't have to worry about the stress of if I get suspended or something happens that somebody, you know, does a black hat, hat, hat tactic against me. I don't have to worry about it anymore, you know. I cash out and maybe I start another business, right? And then I have more capital to start with. And I don't have to stress so much about having $60,000 on credit cards. So, you know, like I said, it comes with its challenges. It comes with its stresses. Um, it's not all fun games and, and, and roses and everything. It takes a long time to get there, too. I've been doing this niche for over a year that I'm doing, and honestly, you know, I'm, I'm finally really just hitting my stride, and COVID was a huge part of that, and I'm crushing now. But, you know, on top of that, you're creating new products, right? And you're trying to get those right, and you're trying to get them out by a certain deadline, and then they, the, the supplier doesn't meet your deadline, and, you know, maybe they don't understand what you want. I mean, that can be very stressful. Um, trying to come up with the money when shipping costs are rising every day, you know? Um, tariffs are enacted, which raises your cost even more. So you're trying to find out the logistics of it. Amazon, I mean, I can go on and on and on, but the logistics right now are a nightmare because Amazon will only let you ship in so many items, and that's true for everybody. But if you're selling a lot and you can't ship more in, what do you do? You run out of stock, and that kills you. So is that stressful? Yeah. Is it stressful when you're a new seller and you can only send in 200 items? Yeah, that's very stressful because then you have to get a low minimum order quantity and you pay more. And it's harder to negotiate, and that makes everything harder. Um, so, you know, let's talk about, too, insurance. I mean, <laughs> I've been getting insurance quotes for, like, the last, <clears throat> you know, couple weeks. And reading through an insurance, like, like the, the, the forms is like, you know, like I said before, sticking a spoon in your eye. It's, like, absolutely horrible. Like, I that's not... I have like zero patience to read through insurance forms. It's really, it's just horrible. Like I don't want to do that. Like I want a lawyer to do that. I don't want to do that. Um, I have my mind on other things and I don't want to deal with that part of Amazon, but that's part of what you got to do. You've got to wear so many different hats, you know? I mean, I've got to be, and you don't have to be an expert, but you have to be pretty knowledgeable and understanding insurance and what you need because most people don't. And when it comes to, to kind of, yeah. Time comes when they get sued and they lose everything. They're going to be saying, what the hell? I didn't know that. Well, if you don't have the pr the product liability insurance that you're supposed to have, up to a million dollars as Amazon requires, not only can Amazon shut you down, which I haven't heard of that happening, but they could audit you. But what happens when you get sued and you lose everything, like your whole entire business, your house, they can sue you for everything. You have to understand what you need. You need insurance. And that can be very expensive. So trying to come up with the money for it and trying to get quotes for it, that's that can be extremely stressful. I've been doing that. I've been contacting multiple companies trying to get the best quote because the quote was so outrageously high for me that I needed to get a better quote. And, um, so yeah, so, you know, if I go through my normal day, I'm looking for insurance. I'm constantly calling and 
looking through the quotes and, and, tr and talking to insurance people and people, it's so confusing because the difference between product liability and general liability and some rep on the phone's telling you that their general liability covers your product, but then you talk to somebody who actually knows what's going on and they explain to you that no, it won't cover you when it comes down to it. And it's crazy because, you know, they want to charge you 2000 bucks, but the other person wants to charge you 10 right? So, like, <clears throat> you're like, how can that be such a big difference? Because the person that's charging you two doesn't know what they're talking about, and you're really you're going to get sued and lose everything because you don't understand insurance. So you have to understand, you know, the difference between product in general and what it will and won't cover in certain different items. So you have to become almost like a semi-expert in it or just a... Very knowledgeable person, not an expert, but a very knowledgeable person in, a, in order to kind of hold your own and figure it all out. So that can be very stressful. Um, along with everything else, you're trying to become a semi-expert in because you need to know that portion of it so you can navigate your business. It's not as easy as people make it sound. Um, once you're selling, can it provide a lot of downtime? Sure. But it doesn't count for the 20 or 30 hours you put in the couple nights before that, you know? trying to figure this shit out like it's no it's no joke um you know there's quite a bit to it now the more you know the, the better off you'll be but the thing about it is again it's always changing you're always gonna have to stay up to date like right now my struggles are trying to learn a plus content i have a meeting tomorrow with a, a group that does that specifically because they're saying it can increase your sales by 30 percent. am i interested in that hell yeah uh but that takes money and time and that's part of running the business and i'm okay with that and i'm okay with the stresses but the stress is there uh, the money stress is always going to be there. The stress is there all around. Uh, the constant threat of Amazon being able to shut you down, it's always going to be there. Uh, or Black Hat tactics, or bad reviews, trying to get them removed, or or trying to get through to the customer that you you know you, you want to solve their problem. A lot of times you don't have any control over these things. You just got to roll with it and do the best you can do, um, create the best product you can. But it's stressful every day to look at that. Or if your sales are down, you're wondering why. And, you're trying to optimize PPC every day. That's another thing that can be stressful if you don't know what you're doing. Or if you think you know what you're doing, but it's still not working, then you wonder, what the hell's going on? Why are my sales going down? Is it my pricing? Can I even lower my pricing? Can I compete with a Chinese factory? No, you really can't. So you've got to really know how to attack Amazon from so many different um, so many different ways that you need to be able to cover your butt and, and, and kind of thoughtfully and tactfully go through it it's not so simple and that's why it's important to have a coach um that's if ask anybody who i coach i think they would tell you that you know they've learned a lot from me i think i think so I, i'd like to think so i'm not I, I think i've given a lot of knowledge to everybody i've coached um that has that been interested in actually being coached other people that just you know they want to push an easy button that shit doesn't exist i'm sorry it's a real business takes real time, lots of time. I can get you there faster and give you the information because I've been through it. But, you know, there's no easy button. There's no, you're going to have, always going to have the risk. You're always going to have the work you have to put in. You can't just push a button. If you want to push a button, go do the one dime done for you program and pay 30000 up front before they do anything. And then you have to pay for the products and everything else. And I don't think that's a bad idea. But if you want to put that kind of money on the line, you better have 50, 60 grand around to get started i'm just saying so you know or you can pay somebody 100 200 bucks a month whatever to, to coach you and you can do it yourself but i mean if you're going to do it for a living you damn well better understand what you're doing at least on some level um and, and learn as you go but yeah it's not all fun and games there's quite a bit to it the thing about it is i love to do it so you know a lot of it's a labor of love and the stress can be a good stress because it gets you off your ass and actually gets you doing things that you need to do to keep the business running like you can't ignore it when you're running out of stocks like you need to get more stock in. you need to talk to your supplier you need to find out where the money's going to come from and you need to get that stock in asap and that's not something you can wait on unless you want to fail um you know so shit like that you gotta come up with solutions 3pl warehouses people are doing like storage lockers like that's what i'm doing like you've got to find ways around this stuff and it's stressful you know you're doing things you've never done before and it's an uncomfortable thing but that's living life for me i love it i love doing things that are different and you know pushing myself to things that are uncomfortable because it's better than doing your just boring old ass nine to five for me that just sounds miserable to me and it, you know it, the, the thing that did, what didn't make it so miserable for me doing my nine to five was i get to talk to people 
get to see what they were about. And the people are always interesting if you if you can get through to them and talk to them. So I've always found I've always loved working with people because they're always interesting. There's always something different about somebody. So that was always the reward for me. I get to talk to people <clears throat> at my job that I used to do and many jobs I used to do. So anyway, I hope this gives you some light or, sh or kind of shed some light on some of the stresses on, of Amazon. Um, you know, there's a lot more to it. And I'm going to forget or kick myself. I'm like, man, I should have mentioned that. But I've mentioned a lot of the stuff that just really can eat away at you. Um... But again, it's a labor of love in a lot of respects for me because I enjoy it and this is what I want to do. This is what I love to do. Um, but again, it doesn't mean there's no stress. But that's okay. It's okay to have stress in life, you know. Stress drives you to do more. It doesn't, it's not a bad thing. It can be a good thing. <clears throat> as long as it, as long as your account doesn't get shut down, right. Um, or <laughs> you're acing. Then it's not such a good thing. That's a bad stress. Uh, a good stress is, like I said... Ordering more stock because that means you're selling well and you have to get off your butt to make more money. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so if you find a good supplier that you can work with, like I've had the same supplier for every year. And, you know, like I have a good relationship. It doesn't take much. I can just message him and say, this is what I need. And he works with me on credit and stuff if need be. So I'm really blessed in that sense. Um, I found a great person to work with. But, um, yeah, you know, once you build a network and you kind of have a great forwarder, you know, once you build that network and you find the right people, it's a lot easier because then you can make other people's lives easier too because I have those connections I can hook you up with. Whether it's getting photos done, whether it's getting a shipment done, whether it's getting something sourced, whether it's getting, you know, a simple something as simple as like a color change or something as simple as, you know, uh, a disclaimer document written up. Like I've done all those things. I have a guy or a woman that can do those things for you. Um, so yeah. So I have those resources. I can get that to you much faster. You know, people don't realize that a hundred, couple hundred bucks a month coaching can get you there so much faster. You know, how long is it going to take you to find a, a reliable freight forwarder? You could spend days just looking for a good one, talking to how many people, and how do you know if they're reliable if you don't have any references? So, you know, there's a lot to that. Like, I've built up a network that I trust, that I use on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. So you need to think about, you know, how much further that can get you ahead. And that's why I consider, you know, getting a class or a mentorship. I don't care. I'm not saying me because, honestly, I'm thinking about just quitting coaching altogether and just doing a class. And I hope I can get the second account so I can run, you know, a live case study. But, um, yeah, I mean, coaching just takes up so much of my time because I like to put a lot of time into it. I want people to be successful. I really don't want to expand on the coaching. I really might just, like I said, just, just drop it all together. The list I do, there's not enough people looking at it to make it worth my time. But, um you know, I want people to be successful, so maybe I'll just pick products for that specific person. So anyway, um, yeah, that's part of the stress too, though, the overall, you know, constantly doing. But uh, again, I can take time out and kind of do what I want, but that stress is always in the back of your mind, like you need to get to it, man. You can't let, just let it sit there because there's things that need done. Um, I have a new product launching, you know. I haven't set up a PPC campaign for that yet. I have like three or four hundred tracking numbers I need to enter in. Um, to like once I send you your tracking numbers, if you don't enter those in and you're missing items, like you have to go through and enter in every tracking number for every carton. If you have hundreds and hundreds of cartons coming in, if you don't have those tracking numbers in, you have to put them in in order to do a dispute with Amazon to get your items back, which is a whole other thing. There's been at least seven or eight shipments I've had where I've had missing items. And then you have to have an invoice. You have to submit the invoice with the all the tracking numbers entered in. I've entered in thousands of tracking numbers manually by hand. So that's stressful. Yeah, you know what I mean? So there's a little bit of everything. There's some data entry. Like There's some stress that you shouldn't have to deal with. And then everything on top of that. So I hope this was informative. I know I went on a long rant about stress. Um, somebody wanted to hear it. So I'm telling you how it is. Um, that being said, I would not trade this for my 9 to 5. I am not complaining. I just wanted to make a video on the stresses of Amazon because somebody asked about it. <clears throat> and there's a lot to it, and I hope that gives you some insight. Anyway, guys, uh, stay well. Have a great night. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, or just don't like and subscribe, or just subscribe. Help me out. All right, guys. Uh, much love to everybody. Have a great night.